I think that the women who have come forward thus far have really been brave and are pushing for change. Um, in my case, I was sexually harassed while building Rent the Runway several years ago, both propositioned, sent sexual text messages, um, kind of harassed and threatened in person. And initially, actually, I was going to keep it entirely quiet. And then this individual decided to call one of my board members up and say that I was being unresponsive and that was actually challenging if I was a good CEO because I didn't get back to people in the investor community. And at that point, I decided to be completely transparent with my board. I showed my board the text message. I said, how would you like me to respond to this? Mm. And it prompted a conversation amongst my board at the time who was extremely supportive. And we decided to take a course of action where we eliminated this person and his investor kind of community from Rent the Runway. But I think that we didn't go far enough because while we eliminated this investor from working with us, we were privileged to do that. We had access to capital. We had really strong investors. In many cases, women are being harassed by people who are on their board or who are associated with one of their venture capitalists, which was not the case in my example. So I was able to go to my board and use them as advocates and supporters. So I think that this really begs the question of when this does happen, and it's not going to stop happening overnight. Mm. When this happens, what's the protocol? Who should women be contacting, especially if her own board is not, you know, a resource for her right. at that point? Well, Jennifer, in, in this case, your board did respond that way, which, which is great. But I wonder, does there need to be a, a further action of actually reporting, publicly reporting that investor mm. and that investor's behavior? Because more and more people are saying now, I, I should have exposed this. I should have yes. said more beyond just the internal community uh, that we have. And also, if you could also talk about, it seems like back in, in the 80s and 90s, there was sort of this idea, being a woman in business, there was this trial by fire. You expected this sort of, of terrible treatment, and, and you handled it more in silence. How do we move beyond that to a different frame for how this should be treated? Well, I think that one thing that changes the game would, ha would be to have more women actually working as investors, more women as venture capitalists. I have a huge amount of respect for Reid Hoffman and the decency pledge that he launched, mm -hmm. but there are no female investors who work at his very prestigious firm, Greylock. And when I look at investors, and I've raised over $190 million, there's really two types of venture capitalists. They're the Reed Hoffmans of the world who have created the LinkedIn's or the Facebook's or the Snaps of the world. And there aren't a lot of women in that position because only 4% of VC dollars have gone towards women. So it's really hard to create a multi-billion dollar company if you don't have the capital. But then there's a second type of investor, many of whom are at Greylock, who are very smart individuals. They went to great colleges. They worked at startups as product managers or as engineers or as managers for a certain period of time. And then when they're about 30, they get the opportunity to join a VC firm and to grow. And I think that there are lots of women that are in the pipeline there, and still they're not flowing up into the ranks of being investors in the first place. Jen, you've decided not to name the person that was involved in your particular instance of sexual harassment. Others have chosen to name. Why are you making that choice? Well, the person who sexually harassed me is no longer an investor, so I think that it would just bring unnecessary sensationalism to the issue, given that he's not investing anymore and therefore can't do this to other women. Um, if he was, I would have a different decision point. I was prompted to come on to the show today actually because of how disheartened I was not only by all of the stories, but in particular by the story related to Katrina Lake, where she's still under NDA, not being able to talk about the experience that happened to her via her investor, Lightspeed. And, and that's the, the founder of, of Stitch, Stitch Fix. Fix. Right. And Katrina is by all accounts, the most successful female entrepreneur in the United States right now, the most successful VC-backed female entrepreneur. She's inspirational. She's a brilliant woman. And, you know, the way that I look at this is when VCs invest in 
founders, especially prior to a Series B. You're investing not just in a company, you're investing in a person, right? And Katrina is the key man. I'm the key man of Rent the Runway, she's the key man of Stitch Fix. And if your investment is being harassed, distracted, you know, halted in some way, it's not only in your moral responsibility to help her, it's also in your financial responsibility to help her. Where if, if that is the source of your investment and she's being harmed, you're instead deciding to put her under NDA to shut her up. And then I thought about an analogy of like how absurd this it was. You know, when Tom Brady was accused of deflate gate on the Patriots, you had Bob Kraft and Bill Belichick standing by their man. He's the key man of the team. No matter whether he did it or not, they were going to support their investment into Tom Brady and their relationship with him. Why isn't the same being done for Katrina? And in particular, if the most successful female entrepreneur is in this country is subject to this behavior by one of the top firms who, you know, this year was lauded as being the first investor in SNAP, then this is going to happen to everyone. And I think that it's contingent upon Lightspeed to take some action right now to show not only that they are apologizing to Katrina, but that it's a full mea culpa, that the entire NDA is, you know, removed, and that we can really move forward as an industry. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.